Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, wherever you are in the world. And welcome to another episode of Glass Half Full, a podcast and a safe platform where we talk with a variety of teachers, entrepreneurs, spiritualists, uplifters, givers, shakers, and serenaders. Everyone has a lesson to learn and a lesson to share. Let's use our life experiences to enrich someone's heart, mind, spirit, and soul. Through sharing our experiences, we can be a learning inspiration for one another. I'm your host, Chris Levins. Let's welcome today's guest. Today's guest is Michael Magruch. Michael Magruch, Austrian, Californian, multidisciplinary artist, speaker, educator, and author. He works on raising the awareness of our limitless human potential and its wisdom. He is an advocate for helping understand neurodiversity like his dyslexia and dysgraphia. Michael's talent is awareness to seed a new consciousness by unveiling the untapped powers of humans' limitless powers in art and creativity, healthy discourse, and adaptability outside of systems. Let's welcome Michael Magruch. Good evening, hey, good evening. <laughs> Good evening, and I think it's good morning with you, right? You, yes, it's, well, we just or... hit afternoon, so we're just after 12, so we're in afternoon. Perfect. Thank you so much Perfect. for being a guest here on Glass Half Full. We're so happy to have you today. Thank you. I, I, I'm uh, really excited that you give me a canvas to paint. <laughs> yes, we love it. We love it. And you paint as you desire. Well, we're going to jump on in. I'd like to ask all my guests this first question. I feel that our lives are in spiritual design. Can you share your life layout or blueprint with everyone? How you grew up, where, your family lifestyle? Came here to America when I was 18. I was born in Vienna, Austria. And I was a sick child. And then I, in school, I found out that I'm uh, very dyslexic and dysgraphic, meaning dysgraphic, meaning I can't read my own writing. Oh. And um, so I, my hand-eye coordination is not, uh, you know, it's not really good. And um, and I could never fit into systems. I could fit with people. I'm good with people. I'm, you know, I would speak of class, but I, I didn't fit in. I didn't, you know, I, I flunked the class. And I wasn't a rebel or anything. I, I was also not uh, bullied. I just couldn't fit in. I, I just couldn't understand. I could understand, but I couldn't repeat. I couldn't copy. Mm. I couldn't uh, copy something I was, you know, taught. And education, and this is questioning my whole thing, education is often, you know, a systematic, uh, a system-defined uh, teaching, but uh, it doesn't mean that the kids or people are learning and often education is not learning it's mm -hmm. just repeating short time repeating as you know yes, right it is it's short time repeating you know people go on on on, on uh, speed and whatever just to comprehend something for a test and then then a, then it's a free for all once you pass that test and i and neurodiverse people cannot or adhd people and you know dyslexia pdsd all these people cannot repeat things mm -hmm. you know they're very good they're very i mean i have a, a view of uh, context that is like really uh idiot savant uh, like uh but uh it's 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 really hard for us to repeat patterns mm, okay okay so of course this had not, not to bring the show down no no of course <laughs> yeah no, no, of course not. You know, that's thank you for explaining it because I'm sure a lot of people were, a lot of people know dyslexia, but dysgraphia is not something yeah. that's as popular to people to understand. So, thank you for breaking yeah. that down. So, with having some of these challenges um, going through life, how has this affected you and the career path that you've chosen? So, obviously, you, your DNA drive is. I got to be part of the tribe, right? Mm -hmm. 
I got to learn from zero to seven how to be part of the tribe. And then you go to school where you actually experiment, think how to be part of the tribe. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't function with me, you know. Um, so what me was my survival and lifeline, which I was not conscious because then for me, it was survival day by day. And at th about 30, I, I had to write a resume and I looked at the resume and I saw, oh, my God, all my jobs were creative jobs. I'm an artist. But I wasn't conscious that art saved me, that art gave me a, f a, a, a sense of belonging. Uh, uh, it fin uh, it uh, helped me to, uh, you know, to relate to humanity. It helped me to give me the what education didn't give me, that I'm part of, of humanity. Mm, I love and that. I was conscious. Obviously, I was not conscious. And you know all the other lessons. We hear music when we find out who we are what are we doing we're we trying to belong and then we put ourselves in groups adapt ourselves to 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 be part of that tribe mm -hmm. uh, and one common denominator is art you know music film you know uh that keep us aligned to get through that hard times of becoming a human a part of humanity mm -hmm. and that's where uh, what what i realized when i was 30 and since 30, I, I, I more and more, and I wrote five books about art, uh, I, more and more I found out how powerful the creation of art, not only the, the product of art, because what, what we perceive as art in the world is the art business. And this is about the art product. Mm -hmm. And it's like, you know, you, you're creating a bike and you throw it on a market and see if it sticks. And that's what that is. The only thing art is different from a bike is that uh it is art for art's sakes it doesn't have a purpose and in that doing that people relate to it so what basically i define art because i'm all about art creating i'm not very little talking about the product but what we recognize in art product in the painting and music in the theater piece is the physical manifestation of a conversation of the non-physical into the physical. Mm -hmm. So when you when you got an inspiration for your podcast, which is defined, but it's, you know, it's not art, it's creative. But so you got an inspiration to make your podcast, right? Mm -hmm. So there's a thought, it's a, it's a spark that something triggers something in you, right? And now you bring it in, that thought, you nurture you uh, put water on it, you put it in, 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 you know, in soil and something sprouts and it's your podcast, how you, your extension, because everybody podcast, every podcast is different. True. And so you, so you create that beautiful vehicle that you created and it doesn't matter if people like it or not. You created it. <laughs> That's why the value. It's not what society, the system says. It's the, the process of you creating it. There's the power. It's not the power that people like it or not, that people get 100,000 likes, that your podcast gets all the awards. It's completely irrelevant. Is that a nice confirmation? Mm, it is. Does it feel nice? You know, yes, it feels nice. It feels confirms that you were on the right path. But, but what the real value is, is that from your inspiration to the actual physical po podcast to actually talking to me, that is the process. And nobody can take that away from you. Mm, nobody. So I love you, that. Right? I, yeah. And, and awesome. you see how, how powerful I just made it about your podcast, hmm. how powerful that is. There's no comparison to if you get an Oscar or whatever, it. It never is, the, the end is never justifying the means. And that's why they say it's the journey. It's the journey, the journey of, of, of manifesting something, of having a thought and creating a business, of having a thought and creating a statue, hmm. of having a color inspire you to make something, a story that touches your soul. And that's the power. I love that. And the creativity. So let me ask yeah. you, why does art and creativity bring us closer to humanity? 
because it's in a, an inherent muscle. It's an inherent muscle that we all have because everything that is created on this earth is uh, is a uh, is from creativity. It's from that muscle. Hmm. It doesn't matter if you want to do a new cheese factory or a new podcast or a new high rising in New York or something in Tokyo. It doesn't matter. Everything created is created from a creative muscle. I love that. So. I mean that everything you could imagine that's human man made from a CD to to a bridge to a truck to a atomic bomb to war everything is human made it's all creativity hmm. there's not there's nothing in this world that isn't from creativity it is an inherent muscle that we have have that we completely suppress because we look at, at the outcome, we never look at the creation. Mm. That makes sense. And that's and I pivot that that's why I I, I did 100 podcasts in the last year, be, be guest all over the world to pivot the people back to be we don't even care about human anymore. We said we need to save the nature. The nature needs saving, like it's a baby. Nature doesn't need savings. <laughs> you know, it, it, doesn't need it, it doesn't need to be saved uh, it, it grows right over it us if if we kill ourselves and there's no humans nature's just taken over mm -hmm. in a hundred years you don't know that we were here so true and so and we want to but, but we are but we, we are so detached from ourselves that we want to say oh you know we need to save nature we need to save like we need to save the poor people it's we, we don't need to say we need to save the poor people because they're part of us and we have to uh, and we have to save nature because we are a part of it mm -hmm. and without it we don't exist but in the whole discussion of say uh, uh, you know uh, climate change you know it never humanity is never mentioned so true screw humanity isn't that i mean isn't that isn't that insane mm. all we talk we never talk hey our kids have the right, our grandkids have the right to experience this island of the planet of Earth as we did. You're not going to Hawaii, you know, make everything dirty and then leave. <laughs> plan that, plan that leave. And it's exactly like this. The people come here and our thought about humanity is always the last thought. Mm -hmm. Nobody cares about human systems are greater than humans. A, a person hides behind a system, another person hides behind the system, and we have war. And war is justified killing. If you kill me in Tokyo or here, you go to jail. Mm -hmm. But in systems, oh, doesn't matter. 80,000 people in the first months killed in Ukraine. Doesn't matter. Mm. Who cares? We have no value for humans anymore. We, and, and the deflection is that we look through systems and on the other system side of the system are human too that have to feed their kids. So basically what we do on this earth is using creativity to against each others through the veil of systems that blinds us that on the other side of systems are also humans. Mm -hmm. So we, we, we easiest as tax system. We we you know new politician comes. We need new taxes. We change the tax system, and people with kids and everything create with the best creativity. The best people create new taxes, right? Mm -hmm. What is on the other side? The best people try to circumvent to navigate the system that they don't pay their taxes. But what the insanity is of this is that it is. All humans, both sides, are wasting their life force for a system that they could have very simple, you know, it could be a tax on everything. I'm not I'm not an expert in anything. I'm totally self-taught. Mm -hmm. But but the what I'm so saddened is we all waste our energy on systems, filling out forms, doing this, doing this. It's always our life force. Because systems are so limited, you got to help them out, and you have to adapt. Mm -hmm. and, and and so it's for but from both sides, that's the whole thing. When you when I freak out right now, and 
or you freak out, we intuitively know how to treat each other. We, we, we don't need to learn anything. We don't need to have education. We know how to, how to behave, how to, to handle it. But systems are giving you stuff that are not even humane. I mean, a phone doesn't isn't being picked up if you slide or whatever, shake it or do something with it. At least the old phone you just picked up and, and talked to it, you know. <laughs> but but today we are like we're navigating security and, and logging into websites or whatever, because the system is so limited it can't even be secure and safe. So and that's true. why we created systems in the first place. And therefore it has so much creativity in it. Oh my god, Chris. <laughs> the creativity gets pumped into system for nothing because without humans, we don't need systems. And without systems, human can survive because they're limitless. They have so much creativity. And, and that's what I want to make aware of. I'm not saying get rid of system, but make systems human attack what it's supposed to be. I have a tribe, so we are safe. So that a mother can can leave the child with, with another tribe's member and go, go in the wood, pick, pick berries. That's why we create a system to, to, to be free, to, 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 to be safe. But our systems don't do this anymore. Mm -hmm. you, you have all the energy crisis in Europe right now. What does the OPEC do? It, 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 it cuts down the, the, the oil production. So they raise the, I mean, in a humane world, they would say, you know, we see there's a war and we are actually increasing production so we can, you know, lower the lower the impact of of that war on energy mm -hmm. and we don't want people to 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 you know it's not like the oil industry is poor true you know it's just <laughs> helping yeah but but it is submitting to a system instead of conjoining with all the all the all human humans which is our inclusivity we are all dna coded to be inclusive Mm -hmm. There's no race, there's no gender. This is all done by systems. System created genders, race, and now they try to divide the sexuality. But they can't because humans are unique. Everybody's one. Everybody's one and everybody, everybody's unique. And the, the, the art is to find your unique contribution to, to humanity. I love that. That is the art, yes. right? Yeah, that's, it is. that's finding the art. And and guess what that what teaches you that art creating art mm -hmm. creating art gives you such insights everything I say here I learned from creating art. Wow, that's awesome! I, I can't read. I'm dyslexic. I can I can listen to stuff, but I you know so I have no idols or thing. I listen to a couple of people, but I I'm not I'm not their fans or anything. Mm -hmm. So, so art is my teacher, creating art, not, I mean, you can look at, at art too and, and learn stuff, but the most you learn by creating. Yes. Can you describe for us your creative voice? And is this something that we can unlock and how do we do it? Okay. So I told you before I created in 2015, uh, art movement in Laguna Beach called the self-aware art movement. I got a grant for an alternative, creating an alternative art education. Mm, nice. And I defined the biggest problem with art that people cannot define it. They cannot even, because we never were in a position to define the function of art, nor art. So it's an enigma. Art is an enigma. And systems never knew what they just gave what they gave. So the king, uh, you know, had Mozart coming to the palace and say, oh, you can stay in one of my 500 rooms and we feed you and you play at night. And Michelangelo did the same for the church. So the systems have also, they just guesstimated. You know, they said, hey, use a stipend and just stay. You know, well, somewhere big. Some, so there's not, not from the system side, nor from the artist side a definition for art and i said what is the weakest point and the weakest point was verbalizing your art mm. verbalizing your creation what is your creation about what is it reflecting and explain your voice like my voice is loud very dynamic 
a very hard contrast, courageous, and it is an energy field. When you walk into a room and you see my paintings, you don't look at the furniture, you look at my painting first, and then you discover the furniture. Hmm. And I wanted to be, because my whole essence is to be the best that I can be. Not to be better than others, not to be in comparison, to best Michael that I can be. I love that. And that's, that's all we can do, right? <laughs> is to be the best we can be. That's all we can, we can do. No, and, and, and by doing that, you, def- you find your uniqueness of how you fit in the human fabric. Hmm. That's how you find it. The best that you've been, not in comparison, because only system do comparison, and that is a total failure. And, and, and system is like, what, what is your system value right now? And if it's not tomorrow, you're done. You're not relevant anymore. Mm-hmm. So, but you're human relevant because you're part of nature. Nature doesn't lie. And in nature, you have worth because you exist. Hmm. The elephant is not more worth than the ant. Both are <laughs> worth one. Yeah, both are worth one. They exist and they have a purpose. You, you, you cannot even... But in systems, you have no purpose. But I shouldn't exist according to the systems. I couldn't fit into... I was sick. Number one, that's an effort. That's that's not nice for the system. It costs money. Uh, I was could not comprehend and regurgitate system defined education, so I couldn't fit into the the systems. So I shouldn't exist according to the systems. I have zero system value. Hmm. Wow. And it's very interesting because I, when I was a couple of times, because you know I, I'm very. Uh, aware that 97% of artists worldwide are on the poverty line. And that's why I wrote my last book, The Smart of Art, where I explain basically what I explained to you. And I was, when you have no assets, when you have no income, there's no money for you. Hmm. There's just there's just nothing for you. The system, they, they give you websites and you go there and then the people don't want to talk to you. Churches turned me away oh, when wow. I had no money. Yeah. Churches? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. They said, oh, go to the other church. That's horrible. Yeah. Uh, when you, but, but so the, the whole system works. And, and, you know, the financial system says, and I wrote a great, actually, we can, we can uh, add that article to your podcast, to this episodes about value. Great. Because sure. I think that will release a lot of people. Uh, will make them feel better because once in what I teach, you don't have to learn. There's no steps. The awareness is everything. You listen a couple of times to this podcast and, and you got it. Mm-hmm. That's, that's all you have to do because once you're aware, you change automatically. Yes. Um, we program ourselves. Yeah. And you, there's no steps. There's no, Oh my God, affirmations. And all that stuff is, is very low level. Once you're aware, I mean, if I say, you know, Chris, I have a million dollars for you. You have to do something. You have to change in some way or other. Even if you say, I don't take it. It will massively affect you. Mm-hmm. If I say you have a million dollars, you have to do something. Right? Mm-hmm. So you, the awareness that I have a million dollars for you is that you have to, you know, you have to do something. You have to deny it. You have to think, oh, I'm going to donate it. Something. something so something is gonna change and that's that's the power of awareness that's why i think it's all about awareness you know so true and one thing that makes us blind is that we don't compartmentalize we are already living in a metaverse hmm. we're not we not experience humanity through you know you and me i mean this is pretty close as we can get because we're using technology to communicate but it would be better if you and I would meet in, uh, meet in, in person. But what I'm saying is we're not using hum- being human in humanity. We are experiencing our human being through systems, mm-hmm. through system values, through system definition, through this system hierarchy. And that is always limited compared to if you would have been in, uh, in a tribe where everybody, you know, harmoniously works with each other. I mean, I work at art festivals where it's just about humans and it's just amazing in 
a week, the whole system, you know, conditioned artists, all of a sudden work together in harmony. It it it's just it's just amazing what it does. Mm, wow. Just putting people together, and and you know that art is so powerful that any art opening you see, every gender, every race, every mm-hmm. political persuasion, and everybody mingles with each other, rich, poor, and you and they mingle. So and they don't even talk about art. They don't even talk about it. They just mingle. They're so happy just being in that energy of art. And that art is a superpower that we haven't even explored. Because why can no scientist explain this? No scientist can explain this. Like scientists cannot explain the, 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 the system of science. How water gets from a, from the ground up a 100-yard, 100-meter uh, tree into leaves against gravity. They can't explain that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, I, I, I'm saying you got to see the limits and you got to see that humans are limitless. Well, you know, uh, especially together. We are together so strong, uh, you know, versus... Uh, and that's why systems need to be human adapt. They need to become that again of why we created them in the first place, to serve us to make us safe, to support us, to create more of a human potential, to discover more of a human potential. Mm. And art is a great tool for that. Art and creating art, meaning creating art is a great tool for that. I love it. Yeah, that is great. That is great. Yeah. Can but, you, you know, ex- if there, if, Sorry, go ahead. Okay, go ahead. No, 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 no. I go think, ahead. I think, I think <laughs> the reason why 97% of artists worldwide are poor is because they're not aware of the of what power art is. That's exactly what I was going to talk to you about. You stuck it up like like it's it's the best champagne that I deliver, right? Mm-hmm. It's just, and, and every artist I talk to, they sucking this up, and and so they don't feel poor because they're not focusing on the end result on the on the product. They are in the creative. Focus, yeah. When you when you get the process going, then and when you get and milk the process. You feel already, you feel already fulfilled and abundant, and the money is just the icing on the cake. It's not the end. Nice, and that's what people need to realize that it's not the end. That it's it's not. Um, that's no. exactly what I was going to ask you is about the abundance and potential of art and poverty of ninety five percent of the worldwide artists. It's interesting yeah. when you lay it out like that. Definitely. And the defining two. So that one thing is to not being aware that there's so much value in the creation. Mm-hmm. And the other one is not knowing how to verbalize or define art creation. Like, you know, what, what I do. Okay. The difference in between. Can I ask yeah, you? So, I mean, Sorry, go ahead. Uh, no, no. I, I just want to say that there's two things why we feel why we are poor. Systems haven't defined us. We haven't defined us. When you go to a plumber, you say, "I'm want to buy. Why am I paying you, Chris? Why am I paying you five thousand dollars?" And you, the plumber, Chris says, "I'm laying the pipes. I'm putting in a new shower, and I'm making a wash basin. And this is my labor." When you ask an artist, "Why am I paying five thousand dollars for this piece of art?" The answer is, oh, oh, my last piece of work was this, and I was shown in a museum. Non sequiturs, complete non sequiturs. They cannot express the value of art. Mm. They're just, they're just not. Oh, you, you just show, and they could then go into ego and says, yo, because it's that's what I'm asking for. Take it or leave it or <laughs> whatever. You know? I mean, it's True. just that they, they, they have to cannot define why I should pay ten grand. Or, or five grand, or, or whatever, fifty bucks. You can't define it. True. Go ahead. Oh, okay. <laughs> you saw I gave you the pause. I was like, let me just wait and take a for that yeah. moment. Good, good, good. Um, I want to ask about. Um, did you have any good mentors who helped you along your way? Um, is Still. there someone? Oh, okay, great. So there are. S- people that are helping you 
Um, is this something? No, zero. I had zero. I had oh, you zero. had zero. Chris, no, no. Wow. No, it's an awesome question. I had zero mentors. Wow. People didn't believe, you know, look, he's, there, there is this little guy that is funny and nice, but he has no education. He has no success in systems. He has no this. Why should I mentor him? What do I get out of it? Wow. Mm. This is so, how separated I was. I mean, just that you did, did you see that. And now it's funny. Now the whole thing shifted. I'm not interested in the product of art. I'm interested in the creation. Mm. That's all. That's because it's so much more interesting. Wow. Since you didn't have any mentors, is mentoring something you believe in and support? Is it something that you feel that you're doing now with your the way that you're educating people? Are educating world the world basically with how you are viewing the creativity and art? Is this something that super, you you little superhuman you? <laughs> yes, I mean good observation. That's what I do. That's all I do. I wasn't mentored, and I mentor artists. Wow, look at that! I enter I mentor all over the world. I mentor artists because my podcast is twenty seconds long, thirty seconds. It is one quote about art creation, the value of art creation. So we learn, artists learn to define and become confident and saying, yes, that's why you're paying $5,000. Because art shows you the heaven on earth. There's nothing else that shows you heaven on earth as well as art. Wow, nice. Give me something else other than nature that shows me heaven on earth. It's art. <laughs> I like that. And then you can articulate that and you can ask that and you say, this is why you pay five grand for this. Hmm. Nice. So how does it feel to be a mentor? Do you feel that it's oh, fulfilling? Oh, totally fulfilling. It, it is nice. totally fulfilling. It, it, the thing is, I'm just pivoting people. So the, 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 uh, you, you throw out the seeds and the people that want to be mentored connect with you. Nice. So it's not like, hey, I want to mentor you. I don't even say I mentor you. It's automatic with, you know, they, they start with seeing a slide of mine, you know, uh, with a quote on it. And then they say, oh my God, again, these green slides, these green slides of smart of art. And then they say, oh, my God, what is this? Oh, it's a podcast. Oh, and then they go to the podcast. Then they see the, the podcast said not only the qu a quote, but uh, but also a question. Mm -hmm. And then they say, oh, my God. Oh, oh, that, there's so many articles this guy wrote. I'm, I'm going to read those articles. And, and, and I'm doing mentoring not directly, but indirectly first. And then they connect to me or companies connect to me or anybody connects to me. And then they buy the book. But the book is the least. This is just a, uh, uh, like and nobody wants to read it. Platform. You know that nobody, yeah. everybody gives books away for free. <laughs> and my, my book costs like three bucks or something. And I would recommend to get the three bucks on Kindle because then you can just have it read to you in any language that you need. Nice. Kindle reads it to you in the language that you want. So, so if you and you can paint while you listen to the a little bit of the book. Uh, I mean, there's no money in it. It's it, what it is is there is ex extreme awareness in it, mm -hmm. and sharing it. Um, sharing it, yeah, it's it, it it comes back, Chris. Whatever you put out comes back. It's so just not true. coming from the same person, you know. Mm -hmm. I love that. I love that. Can you tell me how did the effect of 2020 play on your current life? It didn't play at all, uh, I, honestly, because I, I was laid off in COVID at the beginning. Oh, and wow. then I, and then I uh, started my. I finished up a book. I wrote another, and I did hundred episodes of my. You know, I just recently published the hundred episode of my podcast. Wow! And congratulations. Yeah. So, Look yeah, at you. So, That's great. 
So it didn't affect me. And I really I like to be, uh, I was so excited by, you know, uncovering what's in art. Mm-hmm. It is such a pleasure to play with that energy. It's there. It's not what I invented. I didn't invent this. It's all there. Otherwise, people would say, oh, well, this is bullshit. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, yeah. I mean, I mean, I, it's all there, but people don't look in the perspective that I look. And and I just keep unveiling and being, oh my God, this is great. Oh my God, I didn't even think about this. And there's such a joy in in, in uncovering this that I you know, the, the two years or two and a half years went over like nothing. Oh, that's so great. Wow, you're one of the first people to say something positive about that's gone on. You use the time wisely and you know, your time was definitely given some you were able to do things with it and come out on top with that. That's awesome. That's awesome. But I didn't do it conscious. Chris, I didn't, there wasn't, oh my God, no. There I wasn't think, a goal. Oh, set. Yeah, we, yeah, and because we didn't know how long it's going to take, right? We thought that perhaps it's just a half a year and then it's over. So I just started it and I was so, I got so emotionally gratified. And you read my quotes and you see why I got uh, gratified. Mm-hmm. When you think about this, I mean, and because you know it's all here and you just didn't see it. And it and and it is so much joy in that, and so much gratification, fulfillment. True. That I was, I, I didn't even wink, you know. Uh, and it just was. Every day was a bliss. Oh, I love that. Yes, there we go. <laughs> yeah. Do you feel that you live in the now of life? Oh yeah. Present? I don't have. I don't have uh, goals or anything. Wow. So you just follow along as things come, you deal with them as they come. Mm-hmm. And they always come perfect. They 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 just come. Even if you think it's not perfect, they come perfect. I love when that. you can surrender to that, it's 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 but again, art was the teacher. Mm-hmm. Because obviously not fitting in and having a DNA drive that wants wants me to be a, a part of the tribe, uh Made me try to manipulate, to 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 navigate, to fail, to keep keep on trying, pushing through. I tried all these things. I tried for the longest time. I think until I was fifty, I, I tried to know everything, <laughs> and, uh, help me be, be you know being you know that gets me into the tribe if I know everything, you know. And it didn't. It didn't. And now I don't have to know anything. I try not to think, and I don't prepare for podcasts. I just create out of the moment. I love that. Every every podcast is different. And you can feel that when you listen to this. Just listen to this podcast a couple of times. You will feel that that I'm exemplary of what I teach or what I I express. Yes. Yeah. And that's important, definitely. Mm -hmm. I love that. Mm Mm-hmm. Can you tell me what's something people don't know about you? Mm. Maybe something mm. that you haven't or that you're doing and people don't I'm know. Not, I'm somebody who doesn't have secrets, honestly. I, I'm very open, as you can feel, right? Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. I, I, uh, what you don't know... That I, I love animals. I, I love to look at on Instagram a feed of animals. I, I, I learn so I learn so much about just watching animals on Instagram, little short clips, what animals do with each other, what animals do with humans, because there's so much wisdom to gain when you just observe animals. And I I, I was raised with dogs. Mm-hmm. Uh, not with human. <laughs> I, I was in the herd, in the dogs. They never, you know, I was never excluded from there. True. And um, so I love, perhaps that's what people don't know, that I'm really loving animals, but I'm not having pets or, or you know, try to save pets or anything. I just observe pets and love this observation, you know, of it. Mm, I like that. And you, you're mm-hmm. right, animals are very smart. You can learn a lot. And you can learn a lot just by observation, looking at people, yeah. animals, mm-hmm. 
just sitting and mm-hmm. being still in the moment, you can really recognize a lot anywhere that you are if you if you face yes. that. So that's really awesome to hear. And I love to watch some of the animal pictures. Yeah, Instagram has some interesting flows of the animal things or the animals doing something quite peculiar or very interesting. You're like, whoa. So yeah, that's nice. That's it's nice. amazing. Yeah. And you say you don't have any pets now? No, I don't. Okay. I have, I can a sit one, uh, but I, I don't have pets. Okay. Okay. Well, that's really cool. Thank you for sharing that. Appreciate it. Yeah. Um, so life is so short. What is it that you want to be remembered for? Hmm. Thank you for that question. Oh, you're very welcome. Um, this is what I said today exactly to this question because what because everybody all of us you know how podcasts are you know one person makes that question and then everybody uses the same even even if you you had that question before all of a sudden everybody uses the same question what do you want to be remembered (laughs) for Hmm. and now comes a great answer so this is an out-of-the-box answer awesome i don't want to be okay the more I unveil my part, my contribution to the human fabric, the more I feel myself and my essence is reflected through art, through whatever I, through my knowledge, through my teaching about creativity or whatever, is the more I I go into the direction of that what I supposed to contribute to the fabric of humanity the more I will be satisfied, fulfilled, and the more I will be automatically remembered because other humans recognize that I'm on the path of truth, Hmm. of my truth, and in that, also in the truth of everybody else. Because if I fit the puzzle piece, People say, oh, my God, look at that puzzle. It fits. We don't have to do anything. It just fits right in. Mm-hmm. And I think that is the answer to that question. Mm. It's you... not up to me to wanting to remember, but I have to, the pull is to uncover my, my uniqueness and my how I, I'm integrating the uniqueness in the human fabric. And when I do that, others recognize that. Because I can say, oh, I want to be the greatest artist, but other people remember me for my humanity. <laughs> True. You know what I mean? Right. And it's way, for me, it's more important that they remember me for, oh, this guy knew what it is to be a human being than being a great artist or being a great actor or being a great with a plumber or whatever. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that makes sense. So he fit in the human fabric. Now, he 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 found his puzzle piece, and that has an impact that is just there is, there's no system that can give me that impact. So true, so true. Wow, nicely said, nicely said. And interesting, and interesting that I answered that question today to to another podcast, a friend of mine. Oh, did you? That, that I, yes, I have an interview, and she posted that on on twitter and i and i said oh my god thanks for that you know for that question because that's why i thanked you for that question wow and that's you and you see there's a synchronicity right there yeah you know is. you're in japan she's in las vegas yeah right. so, <laughs> and i don't so, know her so just that yeah wow. so just that to, to, to just to see the synchronicity that when you do something. Humanity and nature is number one. It wasn't created by humans, so that's why this is is it's it's the priority and one tool to get to that and to find it on it to get that journey is creating art. Yes, Michael, that's awesome. That was really great. Yeah, nice. Yeah, let me ask you: What color describes you? And we can say at this point in your life, maybe things. I, I mean, 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 there's two colors. Okay. 
Uh, and by the way, I'm a color combination guy. I'm not a, a pure <laughs> Nothing color. wrong with no. com combining. I, some I think colors. there's more energy in combination of colors. It's uh, could be three. Uh, could be three. <laughs> okay, so it's it's. I love a dark. And I can tell you why. So now you see how I, I define the, the function. So I say a dark blue that is almost black. Mm -hmm. And when you find that, for example, on a car, where it's almost black, you, you almost suddenly say, is that blue or is that black? You know, That's blue-black, right? And, yeah, blue-black, yeah. And But in that blue-black is green in it. Ooh. And I love dark green also. A, a dark green where you don't know if it's green or black. Mm. And then, uh, and then an uh, orangey, fiery red with that. And the blue as so the green is a superpower. I, you know, I wear mostly green as a, I'm always unconsciously wearing green. I'm, I'm conscious that I'm, you know, that I pick green all the time, different greens. Mm -hmm. This green is yellow and blue. And it's just, it's just, the, it, it creates a new vibration out of two primary colors. Nice. That's my favorite so, color too, it, green. Yeah, it, 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 I like blue because it's so much depth to it because it is, because you see vibrationally the yellow and you see the blue, right? Mm -hmm. And then you see the green as a result. So you can see in, in, in green, you see three colors. And that's why I'm drawn to, to green. Mm. Nice. When red is red, red is red. You can see a little bit of yellow in it or whatever, or you know, to get more into orangey, but red is red. Hmm. And yellow is yellow. True. So green is uh, there. And I was, you know, I was asking myself that why am I drawn to green? Because there's so much in it. Hmm. Wow, thanks. That's a real breakdown. I didn't even think about the colors making it up. You don't yeah. learn this in color in color wheel, you don't learn that. <laughs> do you paint a lot with green yeah but not not i wear green more than i paint green. okay okay I, I i like hard contrast really hard contrast you know or going out of the color spectrum with colors that nobody uses or color combination that nobody uses Oh, nice. And, and, and that are powerful, that are unique. They're like a signature, you know, combination because I have glass blowers and, and other friends of mine. They said, Oh my God, I love your colors. I said, Go ahead, copy them in your glass. I don't care. <laughs> That's nice of you. That's nice no, of you. No, I, I, I don't mind. You know what? I think that the real value of creating is in creating, of, of art is in creating. And I think that is the icing of the cake. I think we sh there's too much art out there because every, you know more and more people are drawn to creating art and want to be artists because they think that they they believe they feel that it's more true than working in a system, mm -hmm. you know. But they're pushed into the system too because they are not aware that art, what they think as being an artist, not art. Is all for the product. It's not for the creation. Nobody cares about the creation. Nobody cares how you make it, as long as it, as long as it sells. Yeah, so true. It's so true. Yeah. Wow. So tell me, currently, um, is there anything that you have uh, that you're working on, or that you've recently done as an art piece that you can share with us? As an art piece, uh, let me let me think. Um, or any pro project that you've recently finished? I, I always, I always create art. Always, it's it. There's never any time where I say oh, I don't create art. I just paint a little bit less because I'm writing a lot. Okay. And I did all these podcasts, and I have so much flow on on the stuff that I unveil about art mm -hmm. and systems, and you know all the stuff that we talk. Mm -hmm. That's right now my major flow. The, this stuff comes in. You okay. know. And 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 I, you know, just try to put it on a dictaphone because of my dyslexia and then transcribe it into the computer so I can read it. And mm -hmm. and so I co I collect all that stuff that just comes in. Mm -hmm. 
as a, that I realize that I become aware of. So I keep just unpeeling and unpeeling and and it's so gratifying. It's it's so gra- gratifying okay. that it's 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 very little. But but also I I just created this afternoon. I did for four different. Uh, I did it digitally, but I did four four backgrounds for my podcast. Oh nice. And uh, uh, I don't know. Can you see mine? So this is one of mine that I did. did. Um, and um, so. I always create something. I don't have, you know, this is such a great question. I, the product is less and less worth for me mm-hmm. because what it is, the unveiling, the process of unveiling the unfit, non physical into the physical to mm-hmm. write, put words to it. That is such a fulfilling thing. It's like I said, when you said you want to create a podcast, right? Mm-hmm. And you bring that in. That is so fulfilling. So true. You're not thinking about anything. You, you're not, you're, when you have an idea and you bring that in, uh, you know, it, it's, 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 I need to, you know, it's almost like for me, it's like, I want to put words to it. It's like you take it where it's open. You know, there was a time I needed to create music and I created my CD, right? Mm-hmm. And I'm a musician too. So I, I all I thought was that music. And then all I thought was my script. This is my first book, you know? And then it was all of, it, 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 those are phases. And that's why every artist is a multimedia artist. Because, you know, Beyonce and everything, she's acting, she's doing this. Not because she's making money. Obviously, that's a symptom of that. But because she's interesting, not just doing the same thing. Mm-hmm. It's it, your creativity is a spectrum that opens to you, and it's different parts of you that I illuminated. Mm-hmm. So my biggest blockage, writing and reading, is my biggest passion now. Wow! Wow! That, you see the art, and this is only because you asked me that question. I, I, I never thought about this. I just oh, wow. try to put words right now. Okay. Yeah, that's why I'm saying this is so magical. It, the first superpower is creativity hmm. this, and, and creating art. The second is healthy dialogue. And the third is our adaptability. Because without adaptability, we cannot have a system. We cannot have a tribe. We cannot survive a, a concentration camp. Very true. That so those are three things. And that's... And that's so basically I prove to the listener with you about what I teach. Yes. On what I what I'm talking about. Or what is about me. Hmm. I love that. I love that. And of course we believe what you're saying. <laughs> you make it no, you, no, no. you explain yeah, it in yeah, a way like, that we but, get but, it. Yeah. I mean, because I'm I'm looking on the human level. I'm not telling you, oh, you're gonna make this yellow, you're gonna sell them a lot of them. Mm-hmm. That, that is completely a non sequitur. It's irrelevant. Mm-hmm. It is. It is. What is the process? Our inherent process of creation. How do we bring non physical into the physical? Nobody thinks about that. So true. Everybody just thinks it should be. You know, uh, building a high rise or creating a beautiful furniture. That just should should happen. It just should be there because everybody. It's inherent. It, it's also expected. Mm-hmm. But yeah. it's not honored. And you need to honor it because otherwise the world is going to, the human world, the human created world is boring. <laughs> every movie looks the same. Every song sounds the same. Every Everything is the same. Mm-hmm. I love it. <laughs> Michael, you're funny. I love it. Can I ask yep. you, um, society is in heavy despair. All over the world, things have happened yep. in just regular life. Um, what message would you say or give to people who are listening or listening in, in need of hope or something to rally them or lift them up? What would you, what kind of message would you say to them? Okay. Okay. Not hold your, hold your seat. Okay. <laughs> this is, is got to be deep again. Yeah? Okay. We so, ready. We ready for it. Yeah. Okay. We're ready. So. You know, I'm all about creativity, right? Mm-hmm. And you, I told you about the two sides, you know, the the, the, the people that create systems and the people that navigate the systems, yes. right? And so 
why we are doing this is because we have to learn to integrate our limitlessness. We are in such a despair on one side, you know, the war, the crisis, the climate change and all that stuff. On the other hand, we have Apple, Nike, uh, we create beautiful city, look at Shanghai and stuff, how that changed. It was a you know dirt hole and now it's what a city is. Mm -hmm. We're creating stuff. We're finding stuff to recycle. We are all of a sudden we find batteries that last forever. We, so it's both. So to show us, and then we have personalities like Elon Musk and and Jeff Bezos. And I'm not saying they are not to be in uh, to copy. What they are, they're showing us our limitlessness. They show us this is possible. Mm. And on the other side. Cruelty is possible. And what humanity is not aware of is that in that, you know, in that arc of good and bad, right and wrong, according to systems, because that's only existing in system that our war is bad. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, obviously people don't want it. People have never decided to do war. It's only people that hide behind system that, that use system to create a war. But humans wouldn't do a war, you know, themselves. You know, it's just a system. Even if in the old old times, it was the, you know, Romans against the Greeks or whatever. You know, it's just always a system against the system. And one person abuses the power because he hides behind the system. He's a king, he's a ruler, he's whatever. But what humans are not seeing is that what we behind all that bullshit system bullshit we uh, experience our limitlessness meaning everything is possible from the good to the bad versus in systems oh my god the world is horrible this is horrible of course when you are navigating not in in the metaverse of systems and you get yourself out as a human mm -hmm. the world is totally different mm -hmm. but in the metaverse you need, they need to make money. And therefore, everything needs to be horrible. So you need the system to help you. Mm. So, but what we show is that we are so, even our imagination is so great that we, we have compassion. And I wouldn't even say it's compassion. It's we can relate to the negative more. And that's abused by systems but the systems were created by humans. So we learn through this, you know, system navigation and being in that metaverse of system about our creativity, about our limitless creativity that we can create by will of what we want to do. Mm -hmm. And I think that's why systems are collapsing right now. And mm -hmm. I wouldn't let them collapse. I would change them human adaptive and 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 f and and work more on the human uh, potential. Like what I'm explaining right now is human potential. It's not like, oh, you got to be doing this system and then you go and, and apply for this and you do. No, I'm saying, look at the awareness of the whole thing. It just shows us our extremes. And the, 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 the big problem I see is that systems use problems because they promote right they promote it should be sunny every day and if it's not we sell you a pill a ferrari a face job <laughs> and then if you do that if you do that and you get all this guess what but i always wanted people to finish that thought let's get the ferrari let's get the bill let's get the face job mm -hmm. and if you're not happy then and fulfilled what is the system says there's inherently something wrong with you and that can't be, and that's the big lie. It can't be because in nature, in nature, it can't be. That is the big lie. It can't be that you are worthless. You have value because you are born. You exist. Like in nature, and nature doesn't lie. Hmm. Systems lie all the time. That's the system, yes. And they, and so, so once humans become aware of this, 
then the change automatically happens. Not that they have to re re rebel or it, there's no rebellion. It's just a mind. The mindsets change. Boom. It, it changes. Mm -hmm. Because the mindset sh changes at all. We, we all connected before, behind the systems and in front of the systems. The mind change will automatically happen when the people are aware. That's and it. The I try to make this aware. It's awareness. When, if you're aware and five people listen to your podcast, they become aware. And they just, they don't even need to listen all to the podcast mm -hmm. or all the other people. They just be aware and by their awareness, they, they shift the thing. Yes. It's your enemies and you are both aware. If you become, if your enemy becomes aware or you, it doesn't matter. One becomes aware and then the other one, other side knows it because we're all interconnected in the human fabric. Oh, not conscious, we're not conscious of it. You know, the, the, the beggar on Fifth Avenue doesn't know that he affects more people than you and me. He's not aware of that because people will walk around to him, give him money, get on the other side of the street, look away. The guy has no idea that he affects more people than you and I. So true. Right? Mm. And, and and that's why he's valuable because the contemplation of somebody that is that needs to think is that I can end up like this. This is a possibility. It's not that you will. But it's a possibility. Mm -hmm. And these possibilities to see the possibility, we can destroy our Earth, planet right now. We've done it seven times or six times. We have eradicated humanity. We can do it again, but we don't need to prove that to ourselves. Mm. We, 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 need, we can use that creativity for something else. So true. And, and that's why we have, it, it, that's why I say always human potential, not system, uh, you know, make systems better. I said, Human potential. It's all about the human potential. The systems have to work for humans, that humans can increase their human potential. Technology is is advanced because we don't care about ourselves. It's four hundred years in front of us. Technology, mm. because we just don't care about humans. AI is all the all the all the things, which is basically. It's 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 it's. It's a, a human, a fallible human on on, on, on steroids or on, on, on tour book. Do we really need that? When we're not even aware that, that we are more important than nature, because without nature, we can't even survive. So true. We're not even aware of that. Right. You like it? Yeah, look, you went in, you did go in deep. You did go in deep. That was knife and fork. Yes. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Thank you for that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Most definitely. What's your always... question? <laughs> I love it. I love it's it. Your fault. If it's your fault, if people don't understand, it's your fault. It's hey, your they question. can rewind and listen again. It's it's very clear to me. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. They can go to the system of it and just go back yeah. in and listen again for sure. Exactly. I like to close with this final question. I like to ask all of my guests: Is your yeah. glass half empty or half full? Come on, you should know that. That should be. Hey, you know, it's just half it's, full, of course. It's your answer. And half full, of course, because because I mean, I could go in that deep too. <laughs> what is the purpose of what is the purpose of having focusing on the negative? Have you ever thought of what negative thoughts do? Not not that you should be positive and not seeing the negative, mm -hmm. but but the awareness that. When you have a, a positive thought, it's just positive. That's it. Hey, the world is actually not so bad. It's mm -hmm. good. It's it's both. We just we focus we focus on negative because our reptilian brain is 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 more engaged in the negative because it wants to save us from the sable tooth tiger and the mammoth. <laughs> so so I and 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 if I. What is the only fear that it is actually we should have? The sable tooth tiger, the mammoth, the bus that almost runs us over. Mm. That's the fear where we use fear for good. Mm. But because we are in mind constructs of future and past and not in the now, it, it, fear doesn't exist in the now unless a, a bus almost hits you. Yes. Or, or you, you drop something or somebody whacks an axe in you. So it's just, 
it doesn't exist, but it exists because you say, I'm afraid of not paying the bill. I'm afraid of sitting on the street. I'm afraid of all the system thing that you get conditioned, mm -hmm. that you get attention. Hi, you want to sit on the street uh, or not? Get an insurance, you know? And then the insurance company goes under, right? <laughs> but, or or then, then you're saying, you know, whatever your issue wasn't in the in the in the fine print, you know, your your issue why you would be sitting on the street. So systems are very rarely fulfilling anymore their purpose. Hmm. It's it's you know it, it, how often do you get things? PayPal. Everybody changes their. Do you think anybody reads their their user agreement? No, and you can't. And you know, they have the smartest people. I've talked to the smartest people. And they say they don't understand it because it's AI generated. So it's done by lawyers and AI generated. So it's very hard to decipher. Mm -hmm. True. But they have to, by law, divulge what they change. And when a system cannot sign the check that it promises, it just changes the system. Mm. Wow. A human, you can trust humans. Human, you can trust, but don't trust. I mean, there's no trust. That's not a person, the system. It's created by people on the other side. It's, it's an it. I like that. It's an so, it. Yeah. And you can't trust an it. <laughs> you can trust an animal more. It's an it too, but you can trust an animal, but you can't trust, you know, you can't trust the system because an animal is consistent. It always will do that. Mm -hmm. When you push an animal in a corner, it will attack. Every animal is predictable, and we know we know that inertly. We know a human reacts. That's why I'm saying, if I re freak out right now, you know what to do. If mm. you freak out, I know what to do. If you curse at me, I know what to do. Mm. You know, and, and intuitively, I have that thing. What I would know what to do. Exactly. So, and the system might say, "Oh, you have to do the right thing." No, there is no right thing. All humans are different and that can't be a right thing. So true. It's like the same thing as can it be a normal? Define normal. <laughs> define normal. Is in perception a, of in a sea person. of human where everybody's unique. Everybody's unique. You're right. As a human, how can it be a normal? How there is no normal. But it's an assumption that by marketing over and over and over, normal is this, and this allows us to do. The system value. Mm -hmm. Yes. Dig deep for that answer. <laughs> yes. Give yeah. it. Give it. That's I love why it. Half full is the only answer. It's not a, even a question. <laughs> the only answer is half full. I love it. I love it. Everybody has something different right? to give on that last question and their their definition of why they've given it. So it's awesome. Everybody the I mean, throughout all the podcasts, people have always given something different. And I love it. I love this last question because it's all about your perception of where you are and what you see, you know, about it. So thank you for your answer. That was great. That was really great. You're welcome. Can you give mm -hmm. any final thoughts for our listeners? Never forget that you are a human being and not a human doing. And you're not a system systems are every time you react to a system or within a system you're reacting in a metaverse you you you, you you're not uh, doing uh, reacting in a human fashion or in a human context you you're reacting to a context that is system defined and it's always limited and has nothing to do with human very little hmm. so always be who you are understand that you cannot be normal because you're unique. Yes. And just find your life has no purpose. We we haven't defined it, and there's no system definition either. Hmm. And so we see the all the see we see all the uh, pot, uh, the potential, the good and the bad. Like I said, mm -hmm. we see all that. And at the same time, we are driven to 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 be part of the tribe, right? The mm -hmm. system. That's why social media. But nobody gives a, a system or a definition of what it is, the meaning of life. So the only thing you can do, this is very logical, is experience the moment. Because 
if there was this, let's say a goal we want to reach, then we all do that goal, but there is no goal. Mm -hmm. So the only goal is experience each moment because you have here very short time. Amen on that. Experience, not enjoy it, not, not be happy, not be sad, not be depressed, not be joyous. Just experience it. Just experience, experience it, it and, 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 and observe it. Nice. Wow. Thank you so much for that. That was great. Can you please tell everyone how they can reach you if they're interested to find out more about you or your podcast? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Go to michaelm.com. And that's Michael with two L's. michaelm.com. That is my phone number, my email, and everything. Excellent. Y'all don't be calling him. Send him an email. <laughs> no, 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 they whatever they want to do. We we if you want to change the world and pivot the world and you see some value what I say and it resonates with you, then just do your thing. You, you can contact me or you cannot and just do your thing that unveil yourself and find the part that you are to be in. That's the biggest fulfillment. Yes. yes. Right? That's the right. biggest fulfillment. That's, I mean, it feels like love. If you if you discover more and more of yourself, the self-awareness is the most beautiful thing. Not a theory, not a religion, not a thing. You can use those things to uncover yourself. Mm -hmm. But you are always the most important. It's never a system that's more important. No religion, never, ever go to any system and lift it above you. Because you are one of one and you exist for a reason. Yes. Give us that knowledge. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much, Michael, for today, for unveiling and sharing with us about our perception and the systems and conditions um, and that just awakening uh, with this information yeah. and having a chance to look at things in a different light and a different view. Um, so mm -hmm. we appreciate all of your information and thank you so much for being a guest here on Glass Half Full today. Thank you, Chris. Uh, I'm very uh, 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 thankful that you gave me a canvas to paint. Oh, and we loved what you did with the canvas. We love it. It gave us <laughs> a new you. perception and a new view to look at things in a different light. And that's awesome. Yeah. Definitely food yeah, for thought. That's weird. what it's all about. Yes, yeah. yes. Thank you so much for today. Have a great evening <laughs> i was about to say morning yes. have a great evening thank you for your time today thank you chris thank Appreciate you it. you're very welcome and thank you to all our listeners listening in to another episode of glass half full a podcast and a safe platform for everyone to share their life experiences once again i'm your host chris levens please subscribe follow and rate this podcast on Apple Music and Spotify for more learning experiences. Until next time, know you are blessed. See ya!